A few words about the VTP versions, and we're going to go back and work with that password a little bit too. But with the versions, the available versions are 1, 2, and 3, and a Cisco switch will run version 1 by default. Use VTP version to change versions. Class over. Class dismissed. Ha! Nah, you wish. It's not going to be that simple. But I do want to show you a couple of really interesting features uh, here with VTP version 3 in particular. And also the output of a couple of switches. We've seen this output before with show VTP status. But I put that one switch in there, switch 2, that can only run versions 1 and 2. Remember that? Well, what I've done is I've taken that out of the domain. And now switches 1 and 3 are trunking directly because we really want to work with this password and see these versions in action. And I wanted to show you that with switch one and switch three having a direct connection. I'm also running ISL. Don't tell anybody. I just got tired of dot one Q. Just thought we'd do a little ISL. So that really doesn't impact what we're doing here, but show CDP neighbor does verify that switch one is now trunking with switch three. And we see the port numbers there. No big deal there. And we are set to go. There's our last port number 012 on the local switch. The big deal right now is those versions. And let's run show VTP status while we're here. On switch one, we can see right there in the middle, VTP domain CCNA, VTP version capable. Watch this one when you're working with the live equipment because you don't want your eyes to play tricks on you and say, oh, okay, version three. It's version capable one to three, but the version it's actually running is version one right there. So let's go over to switch two. And you can see that we are not in a domain at all right now on switch two. And I did do a write erase and a delete VLAN.dat. We may have one VLAN here that I put on during the break just for fun. But you can see that switch two, again, it's running VTP version one. That's our default. And it's version two capable. And the reason I took it out is I wanted to work with the password between uh, switches one and three. And the problem is we can't use the hidden and secret options for our VTP passwords unless we are on a device that can run version 3. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. We didn't go this far into the password command. And here, this is as far as you can go with the password command. We do not have any options here on switch 2 because this is not a version 3 capable switch. Switch 1 is though, so let's look at our options here. And look at that, we have a hidden option and a secret option. And you would think, well, the secret option is the one I want. That's not the one we're going to work with right now. It also requires a 32 character password, which is no big deal, but we're still not, I did want you to know that, but we're not gonna work with that option. The one we actually want right now is the hidden option. And we're gonna see just how hidden that password can get. Let's go ahead and use it right now, actually. Oh, or maybe we can't. Now, the reason we can't use this option, even though we can see it, is that we are not running version 3. So it sounds like we're kind of picking nits, splitting hairs, whatever cliche you want to use, but we're really not. You can see the hidden and secret options on a version 3 capable switch, but to actually use them, you got to be running VTP version 3. So we need to go ahead and upgrade that, and that's pretty simple. VTP, and there's the version option. And one through three. And so far, so good. Now we got a message here. And old config file read. This looks like a bad thing the first time you see it, but it's really not. All it's saying is we were using a previous version of a VLAN config file and it was read okay. Version three files will be written in the future. We really don't even care. We're not concerned with that. But you should expect to see this message when you move from one VTP version up to version three. So now let's try that hidden password. And we will use the option hidden. And notice here, it even says setting device VTP password. It doesn't say setting it to CCNA. Hmm, that's interesting. What about, um, let's do a more VLAN.dat. And notice that you do not see the password in this output anymore like we did in the first one. Remember the first CCNA that we see here, that's gonna be your domain name. So we're not too concerned about that, but notice where we did see the second CCNA before the password we actually set. 
Now we're getting all this stuff. So now we're getting what looks like a hash result with some dots thrown in there. And let me go ahead and escape. And let's see, let's run show VTP password and go from there. And there you go. So now it is hidden, it has been hashed, and you can't just run a show VTP password to see what that password is. So you better keep up with it. Now let's go ahead over to router three, excuse me, search three. And we'll swap it to version three. We should see that config message and we do. And that's it. And again, show VTP pass. And we're good. So that's exactly how the hidden option works. Again, you got to be on a version capable three switch to even see the options, but to use them, you got to go ahead and move up to version three. I want to give you a couple of real world notes here before we move on to the spanning tree protocol. Some important stuff here. First off, VTP, like CDP and like some other innocent things we've seen throughout this course and we'll continue to see throughout our studies, there are security vulnerabilities present. Not everybody uses VTP, plenty of places turn it off. And the thing is, if you're at a client site, again, it's just like CDP, if you for some reason want to turn the VLAN trunking protocol on, uh, it would be a good thing to ask and then of course certainly turn it off when you are done. Now, the, with the version three deal here, the improvements from version two to version three were huge. And there's nothing wrong with version two outside of this password issue as far as our CCNA studies go. And some networks still run version two. But as far as some advanced switching techniques go, version three is really the way to go. And what you want to do is not only hopefully have all your switches version three capable, but have all your switches run the same VTP version. Because sometimes, and I know this will shock you, sometimes things don't work the way the books say they're going to work. You know, you get out here and you start working with routers and you know it's supposed to do A, but it's doing B instead. It doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. I've seen compatibility issues between versions 2 and 3 that aren't supposed to be there. And, you know, again, it's just real world networking, but you will save yourself a lot of troubleshooting time, in my humble opinion, if you're running VTP version 3 across the board. So I believe that is going to wrap it up for our VTP work for now. We are now going to head into the spanning tree protocol studies and plenty of lab work ahead there. And go ahead and take a breather. You deserve it. Take a break, and I'll see you in the next section.